Hello, and welcome to this high-level overview of Backup Exec in a virtualized world. Everyone knows that Backup Exec has been a longtime leader in data protection, reaching all the way back to the 1990s. And as our customer data centers and workloads have and continue to evolve, Backup Exec remains persistent in providing ways to meet these market demands. The purpose of this video is to highlight the many capabilities and integrations of Backup Exec, specifically within virtualized environments. Backup Exec has had the capability of protecting customer workload whose workloads are running on hypervisors for several years now. But how does it do it? An agent for VMware and Hyper-V uses modern technology to enable the Backup Exec server to interact with virtual hosts directly when capturing backup data for protected virtual machines. This is what we refer to as a host level backup. When using this method, the virtual machine backup data is not transmitted to the backup exec server via a local agent on the virtual machine. If a customer chooses to deploy a local agent on each virtual machine, it simply assists with the gathering of metadata used for the granular file and application recovery. For backup data capture and transmission, the backup exec server interacts with the virtual host directly to capture image level backups of these VMs using snapshot technology. In the case of something like VMware, integration with vStorage APIs offers further enhancements to this agentless backup process, such as the ability to transfer, transfer backup data to the backup exec server over a SAN. Specifically with VMware, we also have the ability for backup exec to establish trust with vCenters and with ESX and ESXi servers um, so that we can maintain uh, security with those within these environments. So that's how it does it, but let's see how easy it is to actually maneuver and use Backup Exec software to, to do it. So here's my, my lab environment with Backup Exec 20.4. In this, you can see I have some physical machines. I have a Hyper-V cluster. I also have a couple of virtual machines running on VMware as well, on ESX hosts. So to do one of the backups uh, using the method that we just talked about, host level, we would just highlight the vCenter, choose backup, say we want to go to disk. And then it's going to bring up the handy dandy wizard here. So here we just click on edit and it's going to show me all of the VMware VMs that I have within this environment. So as you can see, I have two. I have a Windows 2012 SQL application. Uh, I'm sorry, a SQL application running on a Windows 2012 VM. And I also have another Windows 2012 VM that's running for files and folders. So here we actually need to choose, do we want all of the virtual machines or do we just want one of them? Um, so if we decided we want to back up everything, Backup Exec has what's called dynamic inclusion. What this does is it protects all new virtual machines and folders that are found when a new backup job runs. So if a new virtual machine has been added between the time when the backup job was created and when the backup job runs, Backup Exec is intuitive enough to automatically back up those new virtual machines. So for those administrators out there who are constantly changing their environments or they have things that are coming and going within their environment, they don't have to worry about going back and reconfiguring their backup jobs. They just know that, hey, I've got a vCenter level, I've got a host level backup being done. It's gonna pick up any new virtual machines that get, that get added in or taken away. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll go on past this now. And we'll go into the edit of the actual job itself. You know, and you're gonna be able to have fools and incrementals or differentials depending on whatever the customer's uh, uh, needs for their particular backup jobs. And we're gonna have the ability to set retentions for those for those pools and incrementals and stuff. Um, on the virtual machine tab, Backup Exec is a very Microsoft centric product. So you can see that we have the ability to do granular restores for Active Directory, Exchange databases and mailbox items. Uh, SQL, we can get down to the user database level. Uh, also, we can run SQL log jobs, so we'll just go ahead and select them all, even though there's only a SQL on there, it's not going to matter too much. And then we know that we'll have the ability to do uh, granular restores of the data that's being backed up. So we have the integrations with, with VMware and Hyper-V, so we can get those file level restores, file and folder levels, or uh, individual mail items in exchange. Uh, but we also utilize CVT for VMware's change block tracking and also RCT for Hyper-V. So for those customers that are hosting on Hyper-V using resilient change tracking, 
uh, we have the ability to use, utilize those so we can track any changes to a VM disk between their backup jobs. So we're only going to be catching the unique data and uh, making jobs more efficient. Since I don't actually want that job to run, I'll go ahead and I'll back out of that. So once these backup jobs are run, then you know, you've set it up to where there's a granular restore ability that, that has been added in. Uh, then we can go to the actual virtual machine itself. Like here's my SQL VM. And it's going to pop up the wizard. Since we, we ran a application agent at the host level, so we can get those user database levels. So here we have the ability to, to choose one of these or all of them, however we want to do it. And we have the ability to choose a backup time that we, that we want. And it will have a drop down since this lab environment doesn't have a whole lot of jobs running. I only have the, the, the one here. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on. We have the ability to customize and do consistency checks, uh, re return it to its original instance or to a new place. We can run uh, the database re continually running. Uh, we can run pre and post command scripts and give the job a name and a schedule. And then this is done. So everything very wizard driven, very efficient, very easy to, to, to maneuver through and very powerful because it quickly gives the customer the ability to restore things uh, at a granular level or entire pieces if, if that is what's necessary. Okay, so what else can Backup Exec do for these customers that maybe for customers who have uh, hybrid environments that are physical and virtual? So if they have, uh, they want to be able to move physical machines to virtual, we give them that ability as well. And this is an ability that we've had for, for a long time. But, you know, as more and more customers are going more and more virtualized, it, it's still something that's very relevant to, to our customers' needs. So Backup Exec provides an ability to convert physical computers to virtual machines. Uh, and we can do it in a couple of different ways. We can back up the physical computer and then simultaneously convert it to a virtual machine. We can back up a physical computer and then schedule a conversion for after the backup job runs. Or we can convert existing backup sets to virtual machines or a running physical computer to a virtual machine without even running a backup job. So customer, we give each other our customers options on how they want to do this. On to the, to the next tool that we're able to, to help our customers with, and that's over here, and it's called Instant Recovery of a Virtual Machine. So up here in the top right-hand corner. So what Backup Exec does, it lets you recover a virtual machine instantly without waiting to transfer the virtual machine's data from a backup set. Backup Exec, backup exec starts to instantly recover the virtual machine directly from the backup set itself, and users can access it on the vCenter or ESX host immediately. The startup time on the Backup Exec server does not depend on the size of the virtual machine. The only constraints it might have are the network speed and the storage speed. So I'm going to repeat that because that is a, a very valuable uh, thing for our customers and for our, the administrators who actually need to use this tool, is that it does not matter the size of the virtual machine. It will, the name is not a, a misnomer. It is very accurate and it is an instant recovery. And the only constraints will be network speed and storage speed. So what can a customer use this for and why is it important? So customers that do an instant recovery of a virtual machine, that virtual machine can do the same operations as the virtual machine that it, that it was copied from or from the backup set that it, that it came from. Uh, it can be used for accessing and restoring individual files and folders on a virtual machine. Uh, it can be used for patch testing for customers who need to test something. It can be used for troubleshooting a virtual machine or a host, uh, verifying a backup set for a virtual machine, uh, a customer can use it for uh, copying a VMDK file, uh, verifying an application on a virtual machine, or it can be for using a, the, uh, it can be used for recovering the virtual machine permanently uh, using the hypervisor tools. So if a customer needs to perform a disaster recovery, they can instantly recover that virtual machine and then schedule a migration to move it to permanent storage on their vCenter or the ESX VSXI host. Uh, the instantly uh, recovered virtual machine remains available during this fight migration, so it decreases the amount of downtime because of that. So that's the value add for, for a lot of our customers, is that this is a disaster recovery tool. And because it is instantly available and accessible by the customer, uh, 
they don't have to worry about a huge amount of downtime for a mission critical VM that might have a large size. So they can skip a lot of the manual tasks that come with creating a virtual machine and restoring to it. So let's see how fast it is to actually do one of these. So I've run it back the job on this VM. We're gonna click on the big icon that says instantly recover a virtual machine. And it's gonna give me a, 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 the ability to choose a job for this, or I'm sorry, a name for this job. And then it's gonna have a list of the backup jobs that have been done. There are two of them. So if this is a point in time that, you know, they was say were ransomware, or they did something that was that corrupted the data on there, they can go to a point in time and restore it from that. So we'll just choose one of these here. Then we're gonna choose a destination. So I'm gonna browse, and it's gonna show me the two ESX hosts that I have. I'm just gonna randomly choose 63 here. Go okay. Now, if this was mission critical and I needed this virtual machine to be back up and running right now, I can do that. If this is something that's not that important, I, I'm gonna do it later. You can schedule it. We can set notifications, uh, but let's go ahead and we'll just click okay. So that is gonna kick off. It normally takes about 20 seconds for me to, to do this. And then I'm gonna bring in my, my vSphere web client here and you can see that those two virtual machines are, up, are here. And as this new virtual machine gets spun up, bang, you're gonna see that it is now here and it's showing within my VMware vSphere client. So this is where I could schedule that migration if it's something that needs to be moved uh, within the environment or not. So very powerful tool and you can see how quick that that was up and running. Um, again, it doesn't matter the size of the virtual machine, it's really about the, the pipe and the, uh, the hardware that's being used. So if I decide that, hey, I don't really need that virtual machine or I got the file, I copied the file folder that I needed, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we'll just we'll go ahead and re remove it because it's gonna be using the backup exec media server resources until we remove it. So we'll click okay. I'm gonna bring back up my client here just so you can see the three are still there, but this is now removing that virtual machine. And we're gonna see that come off here any second now. And it's done. So, really powerful tool to instantly recover the virtual machine for a, a number of different reasons. Uh, so customers ask, hey, well, that's great and all, you know, but uh, how can I know that my backup sets or the virtual machine will be ready in the event that I need it to? Well, that's where the next thing on the aisle here comes, recovery ready. So with recovery ready, you can, a customer can use this to validate their virtual machines. Uh, so they can validate the recoverability of the virtual machines that they need to. So they just have to have a virtual machine that has been backed up with a GRT option enabled, so the granular restore checkboxes. So when they create and run that, the, the job, it'll run tests on the virtual machine after it's marked. And it'll be marked as re uh, recovery ready and there's some uh, light reporting that can be done along with that. So this tool, the recovery ready tool, uh, it can be used for disaster recovery readiness. So in the, in the event of the disaster recovery needs to be done, administrators know because they have validated the virtual machines that they are recoverable. Uh, this is also important for customers who may want to vault their backups to cloud or tape. Um, so they're gonna send it off to Iron Mountain, they're gonna send it off to AWS or Azure, and they wanna know that in the event they had to pull that stuff back, that it's actually gonna work. So by doing a validation for VM recovery, it can validate these backup sets before they send them off and vault them. Also, they can audit in compliance, um, meet the audit and compliance requirements that they may have within their organization by doing this. So they can meet their company standards by providing a validation and providing some uh, reporting around that validation that the backup jobs have been done they're recoverable and they've tested it to be sure. So obviously a very uh, powerful tool and you know, has a lot of different options or a lot of different ways that it can help our customers. The last thing I would like to talk about today is Instant Cloud Recovery, which is not necessarily, a, it's not a Veritas product or a backup exec product. It's actually a Microsoft Azure product. So it actually has the ability to help our customers uh, enable replication from their on-premises backups from backup exec for VMware and Hyper-V. And when these hosts are configured with Azure Site Recovery, uh, if an outage or a failure occurs, uh, they can fail over those replicated virtual machines directly to Azure 
and ensure that they're available for their business operations to have the least amount of downtime possible. So they would configure their SLAs, configure the, the VMs within Azure prior to, have a kind of a runbook set up that it's all orchestrated ahead of time. They can test it to make sure it's going to work. But then Azure will connect to Backup Exec for the replicated data set. And Backup Exec is, has been built to work with Azure to make sure that those get there. So another powerful tool that provides a true disaster recovery uh, scenario for customers who want to make sure that they have an offsite option for disaster recovery. For those customers that want to uh, import BMBKs and VHDs, uh, we have the ability through Backup Exec to send them both to Azure and in AWS. So if they want to migrate from on-prem to the cloud uh, by importing BMBKs and VHDs, we have the ability to do that. So this has been a very high overview of what Backup Exec can do for our customers. As you can see, Backup Exec is a powerful tool and it's capable of helping our customers who may have hybrid environments with both physical and virtual, customers who may want to migrate from physical to virtual machines, or maybe they have an on-prem and want to move to cloud, or customers who need a verifiable way of knowing their backups are going to be available when it matters most. So thank you for your time today.